Hi, this is Brian Hogan, the author of HTML5 and CSS3, Level Up with Today's Web Technologies. In the book, I'll cover lots of HTML APIs, but one of the new features that I'm incredibly excited about is called Web Workers. With Web Workers, we can make JavaScript code run in a background process. Normally, when you run JavaScript code on a page, it runs in the same thread as the user interface, and it can cause things to lock up or become unresponsive. So I'm going to show how we can use web workers to load some pictures from Flickr on a website in the background process. To do this, we'll need three files. We'll need our HTML file, which will then load in a file called app.js, and that app.js file is going to be our main application. And then we'll have all of our background stuff in this file called worker.js. We're going to put all the logic to fetch and parse the photo results in worker.js. Flickr's public feed lets us fetch public photos from any user. It also lets us request that data as JSONP with a callback function. So let's set up the skeleton of this application. First, in our main application file, we're going to create a worker object. And we're going to point this worker object to the file worker.js. This is the path of the file that will run in a separate process. The path to this file is relative to the HTML file that will include the app.js JavaScript file. So it's not relative to the JavaScript file, it's relative to the HTML file. Then we'll send the worker a message. And we'll save the file. Now, in the worker, we'll listen for this message. To set that up, we declare the onMessage function. And it takes an event as its argument. And then we use the event data property to determine what the message was. If the message is fetch, then we can call a function to get the data from Flickr. We'll declare the function to get the data from Flickr like this. In this function, we'll create a variable to hold my user ID for Flickr, which I got from my Flickr account. And then we'll create another variable for the URL to Flickr's public photo feed. We're using JSONP for this, which means the results we get from the call will be sent as an argument to the function of our choice. In our case, we're telling Flickr we want to send the results to a function called handle results. This is a neat way of circumventing the same origin policy. Here's the response we'll get from Flickr. And you can see that it does, in fact, pass all of the JSON results to a function called handle results. But web workers can't interact with the DOM at all. So that means they don't have a way to use nice libraries like jQuery to do AJAX requests, and they don't have access to put elements on the page. So what that means is, first of all, we're on our own writing some hand-rolled XML HTTP requests. But since we're doing JSONP, we can cheat. JSONP requests are meant to be run like external scripts. So we can use the import scripts function 
to simply run this external call. This single line will go out to Flickr with our query, and then the results will get passed to our handle results function. Pretty slick. So now we need to define this handle results function, which will receive the JSON data from Flickr, containing all of my images. To understand the data, let's go back to the browser again and look at the response from Flickr. We'll see that we have an items node, which has all of the images in that items node. The URL to the image is in a node called media, and it's in its own little node called M. So based on this, we could loop over all the items in this result and grab just the image URL from the media M property. Each time through the loop, I'm going to send the image back to the user interface, where it can be displayed on the page. And we said it was going to be in the items node. So we'll pass our index. And the image was under the media node in the M node. Now when this message is sent back to the main application file, we need to handle it. We simply need to define the onMessage function of the worker to take the data and append an image to the body of the page. To do that, we define the onMessage event handler for the worker we created. The event object that's passed in has a data property, which is where we'll find the path to our image. So first, we find the body of the page. And then, we create a new image element using the source from Flickr. event.data holds the URL to our image. And then we append the image to the body of the page. We save our file. And then when we reload in the browser, the image is loaded. It works great. Now in order to test web workers in a browser, you have to serve them from a web server. Browsers will block local file URLs, so what I'm doing is using a simple web server in Python. And that just serves all the files from my local directory. Now, if you like this example, you should pick up a copy of HTML5 and CSS3 Level Up with today's web technologies. You'll find lots more tutorial-driven examples just like this. And in many cases, you'll find fallback solutions and advice on accessibility to make things work for everyone. Thanks for watching.